welcome back to the fourth session. We got Rob Zelinski. Rob's a member of the East Leiden 1978 wrestling team state champion. He returned to Leiden as a teacher and a coach. He's involved in the IHSA certified official for over 30 years. Over that time, he's officiated 25 regional tournaments, 15 individual sectional tournaments, 10 team sectionals and nine individual and team state championships as well as eight IESA state championships. He's a certified clinician and Rob serves as a wrestling advisory and officials advisory committee. Rob Zelinski. Woo! <laughs> You know, all weekend we've talked about, everybody you've heard speaking was talking about preparation, reading your book, being physically fit, taking care of that. We've talked in the past even about how to, how to deal with coaches. So I'm not gonna get into a lot of how to hold your hands and how to look them in the eye. We've done that, okay? We're at a point now where we have to look at ourselves and what are we doing and how are we going to handle that conflict that we're going to have. Conflict is inevitable, okay? You're in a combat sport. You have, you come together in conflict to start the match, okay? And your job is to limit that conflict as you go through. And stay neutral. So, before the blow up, again, we talked about you want to be prepared. Let's think about a time, any time in your life, where a situation went south on you, okay? You were losing control. What happened? What caused it? What was leading up to that? What was your state of mind? What were you thinking? What was the person thinking? What was the real issue that caused the conflict in the first place? Maybe it was a communication. You guys weren't on the same page. Okay? Yeah. That's, that's the definition of conflict. However, what was the one thing that that other person did, said, or happened that really said, now I'm, now I'm done. I have no longer in control of my emotions. He shoved me in the throat. Well, yeah. <laughs> so that's what it's... Now, when you're in a match, you're at a meet. Fans, you know, we, we try to not hear a lot of what the fans say, but there's always that one who, for some reason, catches your ear and then makes it personal. You okay? suck. Yeah. If you think this match is bad, you should have seen last week. So I've gotten better. Okay? <laughs> is it the athletes that are whining about? You know, they're a little chippy, you know? Our wrestlers are pretty decent when it comes to that. But if you've done other sports, if you've done soccer, if you've watched soccer, there's a lot of whining and crying and falling down and rolling around and okay. So, you know, there's there's officials who just simply say, I'm not gonna put up with it. Okay, or is it the coach who is going to be that technical expert and is going to make a comment about because you blew him out of bounds and did a stop sign rather than a stop sign and blowing him out of bounds. So now he's going to correct you and say, nah, you see, you just know what you're doing because you don't even have good mechanics. Okay? When you look at yourself, recognize the things that will set you up. What are your triggers? What are those things that you know that you have to control yourself? How do you get, maybe it's your pre-match, you know, traffic's terrible, you're running late, all that other stuff, it sets you in a different position so you're not comfortable. Maybe you're late for weigh-ins, maybe you forgot your favorite socks so you have to wear the other socks that you wore in yesterday's meeting, you're not as clean. Those are little things that are gonna upset your apple cart and really kind of put you in a position that when that coach comes to you, and puts you in there. And one of the other things is that you want to be able to develop that thick skin, okay? Um, I, Sam Knox will, will talk about, he's been in the, the locker room at, at the state tournaments. Steve Ensley talks about it at the IESA, and he says he's been in lots of locker rooms at lots of state tournaments with lots of officials in all different sports, and he says, I can't believe that wrestling officials even talk to each other after doing a state tournament. He goes, the way you guys talk to each other and just, you know, are, you know, back and forth and cut, I mean, you saw a little bit of it here. He goes, but that's some of that thick skin. When we go out on a mat, we all got each other's backs. 
And that's part of it. That's part of being that assistant, being able to step in and say, hey, that was a good call. Nothing like that coach. You make a call, coach starts to stand up, and your assistant says, great call. He's not gonna argue with both of you. He goes back and has a seat, okay? <laughs> so some of that has to do with developing that, that skin. One thing that will help you with that, that thicker skin is stay away from, you saw, heard that yesterday, stay away from that social media. You know, if you're listening to some of the websites that are out there during the wrestling season and they're talking about this regional or that conference tournament or this official at that match, you know who that was. I mean, it was you or somebody you knew. And now you're t reading about everything that everybody said about the calls that you made. Okay? If you let that get into you and ride it on your back, you're carrying that to your next match. Okay? And that's going to become a little tougher for you. So stay out of it. I mean, if you're going to read it or somebody else is going to read it to you, let it go. You have to, you have to get past it. All right. Recognize those situations. Okay? Again, this kind of, there's, there's, I think there's nine points here or ten points. Recognize those six situations, those people. There are coaches, and we know who they are, that some officials work just fine with, and other officials just can't work with, okay? You know those things, try and work with yourself on that. But what is going on with that particular coach or that situation that is the one that's pushing you? You're gonna have to reflect a little bit on that. And I, I would challenge everybody here to think about those things before you get into a match, before you start. Not just in wrestling, but in, in overall, in, in general, in life, you know? Tony always says, I'm unapproachable, yet he continues to talk to me. So I don't know what that means. So, um, when you do react in a situation, what, what are you thinking? What are you, what's your thought process? What are, what are you telling yourself about the situation? Are you trying to justify a call, or sell a call, or start the argument in your own head, and now you have that battle in your own head before you even have the argument with the, with or discussion with the coach? Think about what, what you're talking about yourself there. Perfection, we know, we've already said that before, we're gonna make mistakes. You can't be perfect. We strive to be, we strive to be perfect and make every call right, but we're human beings working with human beings. Okay, if the kids were perfect and the coaches were perfect, they don't need us. They would know what, what the takedown was, where the escape was. They could do it themselves. But they can't do it because they're not perfect, we're not perfect, we're gonna make some mistakes. But on the other hand, if you do make a mistake, change it, correct it, fix it, but you don't wanna make another mistake down the road to correct the mistake. There are no makeup calls. You can't live with a makeup call. Yeah, I made a bad call here. Hmm. Okay, I'll give another one back over here to the other team, and now we're even. It doesn't work that way. Okay, now you've made two bad calls, and you're still not. Mountain out of a molehill. Is it a little minor problem, and you are just blowing it way out of proportions because the coach is just continuing, or the athlete is continuing? So, which part are you trying to do? Are you just trying to be the big person who's just going to try and smother it and, and, and kill it? Or is it not as big as you live with it? If you were a different person, your wife, another official, your boss, if they looked at the same situation differently, <coughs> would they see the same problem? And if the answer is no, why? Again, look back into yourself. Why did this become my problem, and which resulted in an argument and a dis, dis, uh, di misunderstanding, and we just can't control that. Again, don't be hard on yourself, live with it. Uh, monitor your feelings between, you know, during your game. If you feel things are starting to build up, you know, you're starting to feel some of that pressure, we've all had that, what is it? You know, you know are you going to one of those triggers that are gonna help set you off? How can you set that up? Recognize it, okay? Take a deep breath, you know? It, you're between bouts and you got a chance, you know, go get a drink of water at the table, you know, while the next uh, two wrestlers are coming out. Or if it's in a bout, you got to take it, take a break. Hey, I need to go check a score real quick. Okay, take a breath, come back, you know. Do it quickly, but you know, get yourself. 
keep your keep yourself as calm as possible. I can tell you after I retired two years ago, staying calm is much easier to do than it was two years ago. So you know, <laughs> so, you know what? And if none of this is working for you, and you just can't, maybe you need a conflict management course. I don't know. You know, and, and kind of go out there and, and, and kind of do it. You know, see what it is. And all right. Effective argument. Remember, conflict management is not winning the argument, it's resolving it. Two winners. We agree to disagree, we move on. All right? We want to keep those lines of communication. Again, when we talked about the prep, your mechanics, if your communication is good, it's harder for a coach or a fan to, to make a comment about what you just did. They can comment about the call. But they didn't, they have to know what it is. And if you are communicating that, that helps. Once you cut off that line of communication, that's when you tell that coach, hey, coach, sit down, shut up, I don't ever want to hear from you. You know there's going to be some conflict and you're going to need some big time resolution at that point, whether it's today or the next time you meet with that coach, because you are going to have a very difficult time working with it. Ray talked about earlier about making that 10 times now before you can make up for that one bad call. That one bad call is going to take you 10 more duels before you get that coach back to even wanting to, to work with you on some things. Be careful about the words. Okay, one, you should never use any vulgarity. We're working with kids, so we shouldn't be using language like that with them anyway. Hey, but what that one <clears throat> coach does that to every official, that just does it to you. Mm -hmm. you got to put a stop to that. Mm -hmm. Tie that crap. But but I mean when they use that that when they use that language to you remember you're trying to stop settle it but you have to know there's also some things you're just not going to tolerate and like Mike said earlier I'm not going to take vulgarity okay if you're going to swear at me bang we're done remember when you write up that letter of state I've always tried to take the, the the stand that when I write a letter and Sam has to read it Sam's going to read the letter and say I agree I understand you know sometimes you write some of those and you go. Hmm. Based on this, I'm not sure that was the call I'm making those things. But I want to be able to say that when I eject an athlete or a coach, they're gonna they're gonna think that was the right call. That was the right situation. Whatever it is. And you're right. But conflict management there, it says as officials, we know that we have the last word. We don't always have to use it. Okay? I've been married 34 years. I can tell you that oftentimes the last Plus. word of the argument is yes, dear. Yes, dear. <laughs> you say that to coaches? Uh, yeah, I, you know what? I've not tried that. I don't know if that's a word. I'm going to try that. I will try I'm going to try that. Next season. Usually, if the last words of the argument are yes, dear, you just started a new argument. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it, it, part of that, you know, I can get my point across and, and they can get their point. Coach, you know, we're going to get back to wrestling because we want to do That's why we're here. We're not here to discuss this. This isn't the debate club, okay? This is the wrestling meet. Let's wrestle. And if you want to talk about this further on, we will. And I'll get to a little bit about that. When that coach calls you, I can tell you that if you are trying to predict what that coach is going to ask you as you're going to the table, you've now put yourself in a different mindset. When you get to the table, let the coach ask the question. You may be surprised what question they ask and what question you thought they were going to ask. Uh, I can tell you a situation. We go out of bounds, bang, bang, two takedown out of bounds, blow a whistle, come back to the center, coach gets up. And he walks to the table. I think he's going to ask me about this takedown right here on the edge. We get to the table. He says, I don't think the score is right. It's 5-4. Okay, we can fix it. Boom, done. Now, if I had went in there arguing about the, the call, I'm guessing he was probably doing the score when that takedown happened and he never really saw it. But that wasn't the argument. The argument was, so the question was different. So let them talk. Find out what they want. Let them do it. Don't say anything. Again, when we talked about body language, watching your body language, hands behind your back, you know, you don't want to cross your hands, you don't want to stare them down. Okay, just. You, you, want to you want to be open to the conversation, all right? Listen to their question before you respond. There was a, uh, a uh, Major League Baseball umpire 
And he said that when a, um, when a coach came out to yell at him, he gave him 10 seconds where he said absolutely nothing. And there, his rationale was there wasn't anybody who could yell at him for 10 seconds without taking a breath, which then gave him the opportunity to reply. So he says, get it out for 10 seconds, now it's my turn, okay? And now he gets his chance to reply. We're not at, uh, at Major League Baseball. We've all seen those guys go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, nose to nose, belly bumping all the way out, and then somebody gets tossed. We're not doing that. We don't have coaches that are going to do that on a regular basis, okay? Can't say it has never happened, but I have not had a situation like that. I don't know if anybody else has, but. Um, so again, and again, use appropriate language. I know you're talking to an adult, but there's other people. We talked about video. Okay, that person with that video hears you talking about those kids, that coach, that school. Guess where it went? You know, YouTube, YouTube Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, I don't know. And it's, it's posted there. And by the time you get home, your wife on her Facebook says, did you see what they just said about you? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. My wife used to come, and it, I don't like to tell a lot of her shirts, but my wife used to come when I was coaching, she would bring the kids and watch me coach. And I started officiating, she'd come to a few matches and she stopped. And one time I asked her, I said, how come you never come to any wrestling matches? She goes, you know, I sit up there with the kids and oh. some people up there say some really ugly things yeah. about you. And I said, yeah, it must be tough. She goes, yeah, but sometimes I agree. And, <laughs> <laughs> um, Again, limit the discussion to this immediate. Why are we? Ha why is this conversation here? Don't ask me about two bouts ago. Don't ask me about last period. Okay. Don't don't get caught into. Be specific, but don't get caught into. You always do, or you never talk. Okay. There isn't an always or a never. Okay. Let's keep this conversation. You asked me to this table for a specific reason. It's this one. Let's talk to it. Let's stick to this conversation this situation let's deal with it and move on make the decision okay and remember hey coach okay this is the call this is what i'm going to live with okay let's get back to wrestling again that's why we're here and then don't forget to know if if the if you make a call and you're changing it because of this conversation with this coach before you go back and start wrestling again make sure you go over and let the other coach know what happens because if you don't, he will now be at the table and you'll have the same conversation all over again. Okay? Coach, I made this, we had this conversation, I changed the call. Coach, I, I misapplied a, a rule, I'm taking the takedown down, we're neutral, okay? He may have another question, address it, okay? But you have to let him know because that's part of that open lines of communication. We wanna make sure that I'm not doing anything that's a surprise to him. Boy, we kind of had a conversation here. I'm just going to change the call, and I don't care what you think. No, he, he's going to be there. All right, we're going to work with everybody. Uh, let's see. This is one that's kind of interesting. It says, you know, don't use the team's record or their lack of success or the number of athletes on their team. You don't ever want to say, hey, coach, you know what? If you had a better team, you guys would do better. Yeah. You know, that, you know, <laughs> you know. Hey, you know what? You're three and ten. It's not going to be any difference. You know what? Well, you're not going to win this one anyway. I don't know why you're arguing this call. Okay? Those are not good ways to build bridges with the other coaches. Okay? Not only that, that coach is not going to be a big supporter of you at their conference tournament. Okay? So now you've burned a bridge with this particular official, as well as uh, many of the officials or many of the coaches that he works with. Because now he's going to. Because you know that didn't get twisted from your team, but it's going to be this conference, and and it gets bigger. So you you don't want to, you stay away from that stuff. Uh, don't tell the coaches to focus on on coaching. I like to say that sometimes if they were better coaches, they have better athletes, and they you know <coughs> stay away. We like to use sarcasm with us. It's it's a bad idea with with coaches, particularly junior high coaches, because junior high coaches do not understand sarcasm at all and most athletes do not understand sarcasm it's just the nature of who they are so using sarcasm with any of them just is going to blow up in your face okay and remain professional even if the coach doesn't there used to be an old uh, uh, commercial where there was a football umpire who was on the sideline and the coach is just screaming at him in the uh, in his ear and just on him and on him and on him 
and the announcer says, boy, I can't believe this guy takes this kind of, I wonder where he learns how to do that. And the next clip is him sitting in his easy chair with his wife yelling at him about all the things that he doesn't do around now. So, you know, even if that coach doesn't stay professional, you need to remain professional, okay? You've trained, you know more about the rules, the situations, and things that go on. You're stopping things. Your job, number one job, is to keep the kids. Make sure the two kids who walk down the mat will walk off. Safety. Okay, wins and losses are secondary, so we want to make sure the kids are, are, are healthy when they leave and that they don't have any injuries. But if the coach isn't going to do that, you are a professional. Okay, you're trained to be an official. <coughs> you're here to become a better official. Those are the things that are going to help you. There are coaches who do these things and will spend time with that. But I can tell you as, an, as a group, percentage-wise, our officials do a much better job of training and going to that than other coaches do. All right. Let's say you do have a, a disagreement with the coach afterwards and something. Conversation is always, a few days later, call the coach. Send him an email, say, hey, coach, you know, I, I know we had a disagreement. Maybe you got a copy of the video. Can you send that to me? I'd really like to take a look at that. Wow, you know, coach is gonna take, take a step back and say, Okay, maybe he did hear my argument, or maybe what happened is the coach looked at the video with himself and said, you were right, in which case you probably will not get the video. Okay, he will not send it to you. But he may send you the whole thing and say, here, take a look at it, do it. All right, have that conversation, review it. <coughs> Talk to some of the other guys, you know, you're a mentor, a, uh, you know, another official, a couple other officials, maybe you say, hey, what do you see here when you look at this? and make that call, make the call and see what they're saying. Maybe you were out of position, maybe the call was, and you know what? You can always call them back and say, you know what? I missed it, okay? But I'm learning something on this, I'm gonna be better about it. You have gained huge brownie points with that coach when it comes to officiating because you're working to get better. He wants his kids to get better in the room <coughs> and you need to get better so that when you step on the mat next time, he knows. The other thing he knows is that you're probably not going to make that mistake again with his team, um, whatever that situation was, because you're learning from it. All right, um, yeah, our is Four different types of coaches. There's that chipper, that one that, you know, the duck that bites at your ankles the entire time. You know, it doesn't say anything real, you know, ugly, nasty, but he's just on everything, okay? Makes little snippy comments. <coughs> All right, how do you handle them? Hey, coach, hey, coach, I heard you. All right, I think we're good. Okay, we're going to stop here. Okay, if you have anything else to say, there's a table over there. We're going to come over here. We're going to discuss it. We need to put a stop to that. All right, if the problem continues, follow the penalty chart. Okay, we know about, you know, speaking from the corner, don't get yourself caught in ultimatums. The intimidator. This is that in-your-face coach. He's, you know, he likes to take up a lot of your space. He likes to be up close. He's usually loud, very animated, you know, okay? So, again, stay calm, stay professional. One thing to do is to repeat the things he says. Yes, coach? You want me to take a look at that locked hands? You, I understand that he's probably, I understand you, you think he's locking hands from underneath. I'll keep an eye out for that. Anything else? Okay, let's get back to our wrestling. Okay. Sounds kind of annoying to repeat everything the guy said, but you know what? I've told him, you want me to look at locked hands. I'm going to look at locked hands. <laughs> okay? Probably not going to see it. Okay? Because it probably wasn't there in the first place, because had it been, you probably would have had it. Okay? And again, coach, I've heard it. I'm going to address it. I'm going to keep an eye out for it. Thanks. Let's have a seat. Again, if it continues, that's what the penalty chart's there. This is that flasher, okay? Some of you, when you work, you know, Ray talked about being in one particular spot. There's that coach, uh, even Shane made a comment, there's that one coach you knew in high school. Doesn't like you, doesn't matter what your call is, he doesn't like you. Doesn't matter, he's gonna be confrontational about everything. Coach, I heard you, enough. If it continues, stay calm, penalty chart. And if you have to, maybe that's the coach that, or the school you tell your assigner, not going to. Don't send me there. This is gonna be a bad situation for everybody. And, and work through that. It happens, you know, 
not, not much you're going to do about it. That person isn't going to agree with, you know, you could raise the hand of four of his state champs and it's not going to make a difference. Um, he should add five. Um, that legitimate arguer, there's some really good coaches. And get it. Those four, you probably, when I said those and explained your situation, could name people. I'm glad you did not do it verbally, okay? Legitimate arguments, uh, arguers. There are several there. I had a coach one time. I was at the conference tournament. I made a call in the first round on Friday night. Saturday evening before the finals, he comes up to me. He goes, right, and he's got his video camera on underneath him. Okay, <laughs> he comes to me. Rob, I got a question. I guess, is it about yesterday's call? <coughs> In the 113 pound match, he said, "Yeah." He says, "I blew it." And he said, "Excuse me, I go. I blew the call. I, it, it, it cost your kid the match. It was an overtime match. I missed the, the, the first his takedown and gave it to the other person because he came through with it." I says, "I blew it. I should have made the, the call. Your kid should have advanced." All of a sudden, he relaxed a second. The camera went back on the table, and we talked about what happened and why it happened. Whole different situation. He had a legitimate gripe. I addressed it and said, you know what, I did it. It worked. Now, had I not, I have enough respect for this particular coach that I would have looked at the video and said, at that point, I knew I had already blown it, but I probably would have said, yeah, I didn't have a leg to stand on telling him that I was right in the first place. Listen to these coaches, okay? These aren't the guys that come running to the table on every little thing on the rule book. They trust you, okay? When they come to the table, it's because they know the rules, they know the situation, and they are pretty close to 100% sure that is not the correct application of the rule. All right? I'm not saying treat them differently. You're going to be professional with the other three coaches. You're going to be professional here. But you don't want to create confrontation with these coaches because they can cause all kinds of issues because they do have such a good grasp. These are the coaches that go to the um, trainings, that go to camps, okay? When you come to uh, the referee uh, clinics in October, November, there are coaches who go to that because they want to know what the officials are learning so that they can teach their kids to wrestle the same way and, and use that same application. Those are those coaches, okay? So you don't want to have a big confrontation with them, you want to work with those guys. All right, don't ever, 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 ever make ultimatums. Okay? When you say, coach, that's it. The next word out of you is going to cost you a team point. And as you walk away, he says, hey, ref, your shoe's untied. What are you going to do? I hope you tie your shoe. <laughs> okay? But you've already told him, and you've just lost everything with him. So don't make any ultimatums you can't back up. That's why there's a penalty chart. That's why we follow the rule books. That's why we stay with them. Again, don't be a jerk or a smart aleck to, the, to a coach, to a uh, an athlete and and fans are there because they're fans okay really addressing fans that don't don't really need to get into a lot of them with fans cute or funny remarks jokes war stories stay away from them you guys know that wrestling is a small enough little family that when you make a comment about somebody this coach over at the, the school at northeast central okay know that Somebody that's listening to your story had that same coach as their coach, or wrestled for him, or knew him when he was at Southwest Central when he worked over there. So we know a lot about a lot of people, so you don't want to get into that because it will get back to everybody like that. Uh, don't use comments or jargon that, that you know, some of us are older than many of the kids that are wrestling. So things that we talk about and say in comments, they don't get. If they look at you and they have that blank deer in the headlights, you, you've told them nothing. So, and then don't use same comments. You know, a, every wrestling situation is unique. So address it as it's unique. You have a, you know, a, a, a go-to catchphrase, it's not going to work in every single situation. So don't try and force it into that every situation. Uh, dealing with. Okay, sometimes we have a hard time. To hear or not to hear. You should be aware of the conversations that are happening around you. However, don't have the rabbit ears and hear everything that happens. 
there are some things you're going to have to address. But you know what? If you're aware of what's happening, when it does come to this a, a conflict, you can deal with it a little more. But listen to legitimate complaints. Not only listen to what the coach is saying, but what, how he's saying it. With coaches, again, as I said earlier, coaches as a group know more about the sport, more about the rules, more about their athletes, more about the situation than any other group that you're going to deal with. So you have to, you are going to treat them a little bit. Communication is huge. If you cannot communicate with that coach, you're going to have conflict. And it's going to be bigger than just your match. It's going to carry over. You know, when I was a principal, I did have coaches in, in a lot of sports, is, sports who would come back and say, this official is so bad, we can't have him. Somebody's going to, usually the key word was, somebody's going to get hurt. Well, then we're going to address that because we don't want kids getting hurt. But when they would come and say, this guy is not, or woman, because we have a lot of female officials too, is not fair, is not, doesn't listen, uh, comes in with his own mindset, has his own agenda, okay? Let's listen, communicate with them. Answer questions, and if they're gonna answer, you know, yeah. we have coaches who will make and wear out the tile between their chair and the table, <laughs> okay? We wanna give them some leeway to do that, but they will wear on you, and at some point you're gonna say, coach, we're done, okay? Here's your warning. And maybe it's the first time. Again, it's going to be, you're going to be somewhat. Coach asks a quick question as you're coming. You can address it before they get to the table. Do so. You know, is it our choice? Yeah, it's your choice, Coach. That's not something he has to take to the table. Okay, let's do it. All right. Coaches are going to ask you, what did you see? When you work with an assistant, if you've talked with your assistant before, it eliminates that question. Talk to your assistant. Ask him what he saw. Okay. They're going to ask you, what you made a call, you gave a takedown, what did you see? Okay, what he's asking is, what was the criteria you based your takedown on? I saw this, I saw the hand and the knee when they came down, the rest were behind him, too. That's what you saw. If you didn't see it, don't make it up. Again, video's everywhere, but if that's what you saw and that's how your interpretation is, that's what he is. He's got to live with that. And again, don't set yourself into in the corners. Uh, most coaches don't want to have a lot of drama. They're not looking for conflict. They'd rather work with their kids. Uh, we're going to deal with them until their behavior becomes a problem. We don't want that. Um, and then, okay, you need to be a little more flexible. You know, stay flexible. And no matter what you do with a coach, this is always going to happen. Anybody who's done a regional or a sectional knows that we tell them at the beginning you have to have two coaches in the corner, and although they all promise that, the lie detector said no, that did not happen. Athletes, okay. Athletes, most people come to see the players play. We're gonna work with them, we're gonna communicate with the players, with the wrestlers as they are. You know, watch that arm, keep that legal, stay in bounds. We wanna keep things going, keep them, help them out. If they ask a, a respectful question, and there are some questions a, a wrestler may ask you on the mat, Okay, did I get two or three on that? that? That's a reasonable question. I gave three. You know, you know, you can talk to the wrestlers. As you move through, you'll see some of the some of the varsity athletes and some schools. Their wrestlers have wrestled all over the place. You know, I used to be I wouldn't shake you know shaking hands with a wrestler before the match. It just didn't make sense to me. He's not wrestling me. He's wrestling his opponent. Do that. But you know what? If a kid offers his hand now, I shake it. Not a big deal. Takes no more time out of my day, out of my schedule. It's part of his, you know, his uh, warm up and ready to go. I'll shake hands with the other guy, you know. And many of them, I've even had them say thank you. All right. If team personnel starts to get chirpy, let the head coach know they don't want it. I worked with a coach uh, when I was at Harvard. His answer with all his all his team personnel was, if somebody's going to get penalized, it's going to be me. Okay? If we're going to lose a team point, it's going to be me. I don't want you guys doing it. That was his job. This is that personnel that also that you have to work with. This is your timekeeper. Let them know what your expectations are. Let them know what their responsibilities are. <coughs> Remind them that cheering from the table is a no-no. 
Also, sometimes you have parents who work the tables, and if their son or their daughter is going to be wrestled, maybe you want them away from the scoreboard or score clock when their kids are wrestling. Let them say, hey, you know what, we'll swap out somebody for you. Can we make sure that we have folks that actually know something about wrestling and working the table? <laughs> well, <laughs> that's, no. that's the whole Can we? That, that, that was a problem last year when I was coaching mm -hmm. that caused one of my coaches to get ejected. Okay, because they didn't. They didn't the table them. was in La La Land. Well, no, they were on their phones. On their phones, or they're talking to. At the know. end of a period when my guy got pinned after the period. After. Yeah, um, that's the home team. However, if that's a problem, work with the home team administration to have them replaced. You know, if they're cheering, if they're doing things that aren't going to help, that's what needs to happen. But you as an official can't tell them to stay off their phones and stuff like that, right? I, yeah, I can tell them to stay off their phones, they need to pay attention, you know, that kind of stuff. All right, and now I always remind the kids that they need to behave because Santa Claus is a wrestling official. And then fans. All right. A few fans know the rules. You know what? You know, even if fans do know the rules, they have a huge bias to the home team. That's why they're there. Okay? So you don't want to give them anything. Let their comments fall. This is important. I said earlier about having hearing things in the background. Let their comments fall on deaf ears. You may hear them, but you don't have to act on them. Unless. They are profane towards athletes, you, they are made racially uh, offensive. Okay, we're just not gonna put up with it. That's when you go to your administration and say, this person is doing this, I need them removed. Stop the match, stop the game, we're done. We're gonna wait until these people are removed. Because that's, this isn't the NFL, they don't get to swear at people as you walk in and out of the, out of the, out of the tunnel, okay? These are not prof we are professional athletes. So that would be the only time you would ever want to address athletes. And then make sure you follow the procedures for that. And again, if you're worried about fans, here's a picture of all the fans at the last meet that knew everything that happened and knew the rules. So, okay, um, it's not. Again, when you look at this, we know, and coaches have told us, they coach and they, they scout opponents. We know that. They also go out and scout officials. They want to know who's going to be doing their game and who's working on it. So here's a question. Remember we talked about coming back in and thinking about who you are as an official and what you are. If, here's a question for you to think about as you go. If you came with a warning label, what is yours? So. Something, something to think of, you know? <laughs> and that's what it is. I can tell you, Kenny will tell you, stay in the center. You know, the edges are bad places to be. So, with that, thank you. I appreciate all of you staying awake.